Petra Steen, and welcome to the Virtual Media Box. You talk about a gender dimension to foreign policy. What does that actually mean and what difference would it make? Jim, we're living in 2020. It's the year of the anniversary of the Beijing Platform for Action on Gender Equality. It's the year of the anniversary of the Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace and Security. It's 2020, it's the 21st century. There is no equality in any country. So Margaret Wallström, the initiator of the feminist foreign policy said, as long as we have 50% of the population which has lesser access to good education, good healthcare, the labor market and political participation, we really need to include the gender dimension into foreign policy. How will that affect things? I mean, it, it's very well to so say gender dimension in foreign policy, but how would that work in, in practice? Well, in my report, we have seen that you can actually learn three big lessons from the countries that have been working on gender dimensions of foreign policy or have a feminist foreign policy, such as France, Canada, and even Japan is working on it. One, it's a question about power sharing, and it's a question about, share, of, about of, of courage. You need to be courageous to put this on the table. Well, look at all the pictures of big summits, international affairs, look for the women. You see that 50% of the population is very often excluded. And secondly, when you want to solve a crisis, whether it's climate, conflict, and even Corona, if you forget about 50% of the population, do you think those solutions will be sustainable? And Jim, let's be clear here. Gender is not only about women's rights. It's also about men's rights. And thirdly, Gender dimension means that you need to be intersectional, a very new word in foreign policy analysis. It means that you need people of all classes, of all genders, of all ethnicities, of all cultures, as a matter of representation. So the white boys club, which has been dominant in foreign policy, they have to move over a little bit to become more inclusive. We have seen the, the whole move towards gender equality taking a backward step over the last year or so, haven't we? We've seen um, actions being taken that go completely against um, feminism. We've seen even Turkey trying talking about withdrawing from the Istanbul Convention. So uh, it, it's not going the right way. What's gone wrong here? You also mentioned, of course, that um, it's not just having women involved, but not just white women with good connections. It, it's, it's got to be much broader altogether, hasn't it? You know, I was very, very pleased with the uh, speech of Michael Roth, the um, European minister from the German government um, to the standard, standing committee of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, when he said, gender equality doesn't mean replacing patriarchy with matriarchy. It's about equality for all. And he was also very adamant that in these times where people make false claims about what gender actually means, that we shouldn't accept this, that the Istanbul Convention is to protect women's rights. It's to protect families from abuse behind the front door. So uh, I'm very happy that we have these uh, male champions of gender equality and uh, dare I say gender dimension into foreign policy. Because we've also seen in, in Poland, uh, somebody has argued against the Istanbul Convention on the grounds that feminism leads the way to homosexuality. I'm not quite sure how he works that out, but there does seem to be that sort of backlash. How do you counter that when you're trying to involve uh, women more in, in foreign policy? Well, I think we have to listen to all the women and men who are in the streets of uh, Polish cities, uh, uh, cities demonstrating for the right to have a safe and legal abortion. Um, and I think we've seen uh, these voices in other countries, in Turkey, in Hungary. So let's listen to the voices that really understand what this is about. We are a human rights organization. The Council of Europe is there to protect the human rights of all of our citizens, of all of our genders. Um, and I think we have a few conventions such as the Istanbul Convention who can really protect those citizens' rights. And I think if we include gender, into these discussions, a real understanding of this concept, that we will be able to protect the rights of our citizens even more. As you say, here we are 2020, and yet we're still fighting the same fight. I mean, all right, there's slight progress being made in some areas, but it's wrong that we're still having to fight it at all, isn't it? Absolutely. And I think 
when Kamala Harris uh, was basically elected as the new vice president elect, uh, many people said, oh, wonderful, now girls can see that they can become the vice president of the United States. And I would say, no, boys can see that women can be leaders in the 21st century as well. So I'm very, very grateful for the leadership of all those women, but also all those men who dare to be uh, open-minded, who dare to include everybody who doesn't look like themselves to really, really protect our human rights. Petra Steenen, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.